Air Force sent the RAF cameras to firstly operate at Butterworth in Malaysia uh, in 1958. They stayed there for nine years and in April 1967, they first moved across to Phan Rang in Vietnam. They, the squadron was number two squadron, Royal Australian Air Force, and it joined into 35th Tactical Fighter Wing of the 7th Air Force, US. And we found when we arrived in Phan Rang that there were other bombers there as well, similar to the Canberra. In fact, it was the American Mark B-57, which was operated by a number of squadrons. And so we were co-located at Phan Rang and virtually integrated into the United States Air Force tactical bombing system, which operated right across South Vietnam. Operational missions uh, from Phan Rang were tasked by the United States Air Force tactical commanders and the aircraft flew uh, with uh, 500 and 1,000 pound bombs in its bomb bay and one on each wingtip. Uh, we were tasked by the American authorities uh, just as they tasked their own service people and given a target area to proceed to. Uh, we would uh, taxi out and take off. And in order to get anywhere, we had to use the tactical air navigation tech air system, which was uh, basically an electronic system where we were able to measure our bearing and distance from various TACAN stations around South Vietnam. And the whole of uh, the US Air Force system used that TACAN system. And we always reported ourselves as being as uh, 50 degrees or a zero five zero degrees at 25 miles from a particular base, <clears throat> excuse me. And we are under radar uh, guidance as well from the ground. So they knew where we were all the time. So for an operation, we would head out to a target area generally and when we arrived in the target area, we would be directed to go onto another frequency and talk to a forward air controller. The forward air controller was basically an American Air Force pilot who flew an 01 Bird Dog light aircraft, and he would know his target area very well. Our aim was to provide close air support to the army troops on the ground. And essentially we were controlled by the US military, air, military uh, system, which was the US Army controlled. So the whole US Air Force virtually worked for the US Army in that context. So we would then come in and the forward air controller would tell us where the target was and we would call in. Generally, we would meet up with him and he would then point out the target to us. Once we're in touch with the fact, he would tell us, generally we were flying at something like 15, 20,000 feet altitude. He would call us down to his altitude and he'd be generally around about two to 3,000 feet above the ground, fairly safely above ground, enemy ground fire. Uh, he would then give us a, a location where we would rendezvous and he would then point out the geographical features of where the target was. And so quite often he would refer to various rivers or roads or items like that, where, which we could identify. And so then work out where the target was. And then we'd have to count or determine what our bombing pattern would be because we flew, uh, a level bombing pattern, generally at 3,000 feet, and we would do what was like an op a circuit, a flying circuit, just as though we were landing in an airport, except we stayed at the same height. And so we would generally fly a pattern which enabled us to then line up on the target. Quite often, it might be 
a canal, along a canal or, or some straight point where we would have to line up. Other times it was just a spot target where we would have to locate the actual position generally in reference to some sort of geographical feature, but quite often the fact would fire out a smoke uh, rocket uh, from underneath his wings and mark the target. Sometimes they weren't that accurate and he would not necessarily have us drop our bombs right on the smoke, but he might tell us to say, I want you to drop 100 metres under my smoke and 50 metres to the left or right, depending on the direction we were coming in. So that way he then taught us or told us how to uh, take our aiming point and we would then set up our pattern, which was the circuit pattern, and we would fly over the target, generally turn left because the pilot was on the left-hand side and uh, wanted to see uh, as much as he could. So we'd turn left, uh, do a downwind leg, uh, open the bomb bay doors, uh, and I would crawl down the front and the nose, and we would set up the uh, we would set up the bomb the bombing uh, situation. We would select which number of bombs we're going to drop, what sort of spacing would drop between the bombs, uh, or we'd drop them singly. Depends, and we might do six runs, uh, uh, six or eight runs, and drop them singly. And uh, we would come in and uh, attack our target. The, the aircraft that were used in the tactical air bombing, uh, being US Air Force, uh, consisted of F-100 Super Sabre aircraft, with a couple of squadrons were based at Phan Rang, and then they were replaced or uh, had additionally F-4E or F-4 Phantom aircraft that were also very good bombers. All these aircraft were dive bombers. They used to come in from a fairly high altitude and point the nose towards the target and drop their bombs. Compared with us, who dropped on a straight and level uh, attitude and just opening our bomb bays to drop our bombs. Quite often, we'd have conflicts in the target area uh, a number of for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, the Americans were coming from different parts of Vietnam uh, to us and consequently might have been on different frequencies talking to different stations as they came in. And so we could actually be in a bombing area where there are other aircraft that we didn't know about. And we didn't have any uh, electronic warning gear or uh, other gear to detect aircraft around. So we had to be very aware visually in order to avoid colliding with our friendly aircraft. Uh, in addition, uh, we would have the B-52s coming into South Vietnam from outside who were dropping their bombs from very high altitude. And we would have to be very careful uh, that we didn't get impacted by their falling bombs. In fact, uh, on the emergency frequency, a warning used to come out and the B-52s were known as airborne artillery and we would get an airborne artillery warning to say that uh, there was going to be bombs dropping and they would give this location. And it was either a location from a TACAM distance or we had a grid map system to which they used and they would give a grid position where the bombs were going to be dropped. And so we would avoid that <laughs> and keep out of the way.